A ball of mass 200 grams is dropped vertically downwards from the top of a building to a concrete floor below. The ball bounces off the floor. The velocity time graph below shows the motion of the ball. Ignore the effects of F friction. Take upward motion as positive. 3.1.1. Use the graph only. Okay. And then we're supposed to determine the number of times the ball bounces off the floor. So it is dropped vertically downwards. Uh, it seems like this is where it strikes the ground, right? And then obviously we can see now that the velocity uh, becomes positive as it is going up. And then it strikes the ground one more time. Okay, so what is the equation saying? To determine the number of times the ball bounces off. Okay, but you can see after the second bounce, it does not bounce off. Right? Oh, not after the second bounce. It does not make sense. After it strikes the ground for the second time, it does not bounce off. Right? It remains on the ground. So clearly, uh, the number of times it bounces off the floor is 1. It only bounces the floor one time. So that is 1. That is the answer there. The answer is 1. Uh, why is this thing not letting me write? Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Alright. And then 3.1.2. Determine whether the collision between the ball and the floor is elastic or inelastic. Provide a reason for the answer. Well, it is inelastic. It is inelastic. Right. Let's take a look at this. It strikes the ground with a speed, right? No direction. I'm only talking about speed. Uh, it strikes the ground with a speed of 10 meters per second. And it leaves the ground with a speed of 7.5 meters per second. Clearly, 10 meters per second is not equal to 7.5 meters per second. So the collision is inelastic, right? The collision would be elastic if... It strikes the ground with a velocity of 10 meters per second and leaves the ground with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Well, not velocity, but speed, because if we're talking about velocity, we then have to talk about the direction. Right. 3.1.3. To calculate the height from... Oh, okay. We want to use the graph only to calculate the height from which the ball is dropped. So this question says use the graph only. So you cannot use equations of motions. You have to use the area of the graph in order to calculate the height. So this is the time at which it is dropped and then this is the time at which it strikes the ground. So you can clearly see the area that we have. This is the area. We need to calculate that area. It's going to give us the height. So the height will be equals to a half base multiplied by height. Why a half base multiplied by height? Because we have a triangle. So a half uh, the base is the time, which is 1.5. The height is the velocity, uh, which is clearly 10 as it strikes the ground. Okay, so this gives us 7.5 meters. So there we go. That is the height. We're not supposed to use equations of motions here. We're supposed to use the area. Right. If we're looking for the acceleration, we will calculate the gradient. Right. That is how it works. Okay, 3.2, calculate the impulse that the ball exists on the floor when it strikes the floor for the first time. Okay, the impulse, um, 3.2, right. So let's take a look at the information that we have here. Uh, we have the velocity at which it strikes the ground, we have the velocity at which it leaves the ground. So we should be able to calculate the impulse. Take a look at this. F net delta T is equal to delta this right here is the impulse, not delta P, right? Delta P is the change in momentum. F net delta T is the impulse. They are just equals to each other. Okay, so F net delta T is equals to delta P, right? So this is equals to delta P. And then in place of delta P, we can then say mass VF minus VI, okay? And then what is the mass of the object? zero or 200 grams so in kgs that is 0 0.2 the final velocity uh let's take up as positive 
the final velocity is 7.5 meters so we have 7.5 minus the initial velocity which is minus 10 so that will be 7.5 plus 10 right so we have 0 0.2 multiplied by 17.5 okay and then if you put that in your calculator you should get 3.5 neutrons seconds right um, and then impulse it should be a vector because we have f net right so because it is a vector we should give the direction uh, the impulse that the ball exists on the floor so the ball is hitting the floor so it should be downwards right it should be downwards so there we go that is our calculated impulse uh, pay attention to the SI unit. The SI unit is Newton seconds, not kg meters per, se uh, uh, meters per second. Kg meters per second is for the change in momentum. The impulse is Newton seconds. Right. These things are not the same. You should be very careful. Okay. 3.3. In the diagram below, ball A is dropped from a height of 10 meters and simultaneously, ball B is thrown vertically upward at a velocity of 20 meters per second. Ignore the effects of air friction. Calculate the height from which uh, calculate the height from the ground at which the two balls collide. Okay. So obviously in the course we have talked about this question and exactly how to approach it. Right? Uh, but let's just take a look at it again. So let's say the two balls meet at this point, right? <laughs> If they meet at that point, uh, we can take the displacement of ball A when they meet to be K, right? Obviously, if the displacement or let's say rather the distance that ball A has traveled is K when they collide with each other, then the distance that B would have uh, traveled is 40 minus K, right? Because this entire thing is 40. So if ball A has traveled K and then the entire thing is 40, ball B should have traveled 40 minus K. So that when we add these two values, we get 40. Right. So that is the, the first part that you need to understand. It's very crucial that you understand that part in these kind of problems. Right. So we have the displacement of a which we are saying it is k and then we have the displacement of b which is 40 minus k right uh, acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared the same for both objects right and then they are projected at the same time so they have the same time also they have the same time also because they're projected at the same time and then what else oh they are dropped so if they're dropped we have vi we have vi because they're dropped right so oh well one object is dropped and the other one is projected upwards so if we start with ball if we start with ball what ball a let me just uh, drag these upwards um i don't want to write this in two pages if i can write it in one okay so if we start with ball a we're going to have delta y when it goes to vi delta t plus a half acceleration delta t squared. So the displacement of a, let's take up is positive, right? It's going to be minus k because you're taking up is positive. The initial velocity, it is dropped, so it is zero. So we have zero delta t plus a half acceleration is minus 9.8 delta t squared okay so we're gonna have minus k is equals to zero delta t that is just gonna give us zero and then we have minus 4.9 delta t squared right so this is where we end with ball a so let's just let this be equation one we don't have to let it be equation one but for the sake of clarity we can do that and then for ball b um let me just copy down the equation for the faint hearted ones vi delta t plus a half acceleration delta t squared so the displacement will be uh it is going upwards right and then we're taking up is positive 
So that will just gonna be 40 minus k. That is equals to vi. Uh, it is thrown vertically upwards with the initial velocity of 20. So that is 20 delta t plus a half. Acceleration is minus 9.8 delta t squared. So we're gonna have 40 minus k being equals to 20 delta t minus 4.9 delta t squared okay um so uh, now at this point we can uh, do a couple of things right uh, because we have two equations now we are done with the physics we just playing around with the math so we said that minus k not that we said we calculated minus k to be equals to minus 4.9 delta t squared so in place of minus 4.9 delta t squared let's just sub k right why can't we do that? Why can't we do that? We should be able to do that. Um, and then here we also have minus k. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sub minus 4.9 delta t squared. Another thing that we can do, we can make minus k the subject of the formula here. It will be close to 20 delta t minus 4.9 delta t squared. But what is minus k? Minus k is just minus 4.9 delta t squared. This is equals to, well, we take in 40 to the other side, so we're going to have minus 40. This is equals to 20 delta t minus 4.9 delta t squared minus 40. So when you take minus 4.9 delta t squared to the left hand side, it's going to be plus. So we're going to get 0 is equals to 20 delta t minus 40. Clearly, delta t is equal to 2 seconds. So the objects, they meet each other after 2 seconds. But we are not interested at the time. We want to calculate the height above the ground. So minus k is equal to minus 4.9 delta t squared. So k is equal to 4.9 delta t squared. k is equal to 4.9 multiplied by t squared. We know that delta t is 2. So that is 4 multiplied by 4.9, 19.6. So k is 19.6. So if this is 19.6, this will be 20.1. 20.1, not 20.1, but 20.4. This will be 20.4. So that when we add the 2, we actually get uh, 40. So the height above ground is equals to 40 minus 19.6 which is 20.4 meters so there we go that is question three All right <clears throat> if you like this question video four? you will definitely love my course go ahead and click the link on my bio and you will land on this page you will not only find the past exam questions but introduction videos where i break down complex concepts into small pieces that are easy to digest it is very important in grade 12 to stay ahead of your teacher and this is what this course is for it's very easy to navigate through the course as videos are arranged into collections you can clearly see that we have electrostatics work energy and power Doppler effect so on and so on do you maybe need help with study tips and creating your own timetable we can talk about that inside the course and i can help you out it doesn't even take a minute to join can't wait to hear from you